not to weave? That is the question you have voted for today for me to talk about. Now, when you think of weeds, you often think of your garden as overrun and pretty damn stressful. But I'm gonna show you how to have a garden that is both biodiverse and beautiful at the same time. Now, what is the definition of a weed? It is generally a plant that's in the wrong place. Now, the worry with a lot of gardeners about weeds, or wildflowers as we like to call them, is that they will make your garden look untidy. They'll outcompete your plants in your garden, they'll harbour pests and diseases, and they become quite stressful when in fact they're actually rather beautiful. Now, the first question you should always ask yourself is, do I really need to weed it? Because every weed has its place in the garden. Now, if you take this nettle, for example, a nettle actually indicates you've got rich soil. So when you're looking for a patch to dig for your veggie plot, if you see nettles, it's usually a good sign. And uh, obviously it's a very good edible. Now, many of you may not realize that nettles are actually very good for wildlife. Uh, they attract butterfly larvae, which feed on the young leaves. So you should always leave a patch of stinging nettles in your garden. Now, the next plant is digitalis, foxgloves to many. Now, I was always told never touch them as a kid, which instantly fills you with fear, because they'll stop your heart. But in fact, they're one of the most important drugs are made from this plant, digoxin. And we need this plant. It's also very beneficial to bees. Nectar, which will be coming out now. So another wildflower that we absolutely adore in our garden is Herb Robert. Now, geraniums are very popular in gardens as bedding plants, or some call them pelagoniums. And the problem with those is the flowers are not accessible to our wildlife. They cannot get to the frilly flowers. Now, the great thing about Herb Robert is it's great ground cover. It's actually very shallow rooting, so if you did want to thin it out, it's quite easy to pull out. But nature has given us our very own geranium to put in the border for you and it's very pretty and the bees adore it. So the perfect law, often people think of the perfect law is grass, which is a bit of a monoculture. It is in fact a desert. Now, if you look at this type of lawn, this is a wildflower meadow, and it's often lots of wildflowers, uh, weeds, um, but it's very beautiful. So we've got a few just right here in front of the shop. And this is the oxide daisy, very pretty white flower. You see it in the verges of the roads. Now we have the deep-rooted cats here, which looks a little bit like a dandelion. We also have a good few daisies, love daisies. They're very good again, very easy. And we also have a lot of ranunculus or creeping buttercup, which is the bane of many gardeners' lives. Now it's also good to thin them out in your borders, but in the law, en masse, they look very impressive. We have also, I'm just gonna reach over around here, Red clover. Clover's a very good plant, actually. It's a nitrogen fixer. You should always leave it in the lawn. It helps your grass grow. Now, as well as looking stunning compared to a monoculture lawn, it is, in fact, a huge larder for wildlife. So the flowers provide lots of nectar, which will attract lots of bees and butterflies into your garden, which we all love to see. And the seed heads will produce a food crop for the birds, so you'll be able to attract many more birds into your wildflower lawn. Now, as far as weeding your lawn, all you have to do is give it a trim once a year. And you do this around September time, cut it all down to the ground, leave it for two days to dry in the sun, then rake it up and compost that material. And it's all free. To enjoy your meadow, just make sure you mow a nice pathway right through it to make the most of it. So every now and again, you will have to weed when certain plants become a thug. It is up to you to be able to get in there and deal with that. Now there's three ways of dealing with that. And the first one is manual. So you get involved, you do it by hand. And a good little garden fork is always a good tool. And you're literally just gonna take these out, root and all. And these are Grizzlinia. Now Grizzlinia is a bit of a thug around here. We'll take over. So if you get all the roots, plant is pretty much not going to come back. The second method is more mechanical and it's always worth investing in really good tools, ones that last and ones that really do the job. This is a Swiss oscillating hoe and it works really well. It takes the, the back raking work out of it for you. You literally just run it back and forth and you will do this on a sunny, dry day in the morning. 
and the idea behind that is when you hold them off, which cuts them off, they're all wilt in the sun and dry. It makes it a lot easier for you. So don't do it in the rain. It's just not doing anyone any favours. The final method for control is chemical. Now, chemical, you have to remember, is a very last resort. When you've tried everything else, and I mean everything, then only will you reach for the bottle and try that. What we've done, we've trained this plant, Convolvulus bindweed, as many know, people know it, it chokes a plant, literally strangles it, smothers it. A natural spray can work well. We use Newdorf Plus root kill. So we're trialing it. We're training up a bamboo cane, as you can see, and we'll use a sponge dabbed in the mixture and we'll just rub it onto the, the top and the bottom of the leaf. And hopefully in a few weeks we'll see some results. Now, we'll have to do this a few times throughout the growing season for it to work. Remember some golden rules. Wear gloves, always spray on a non windy day, spray on a dry day, and do it first thing in the morning when there's no wildlife about. The other methods of weed control that we use here, apart from the Noodle Plus, is we use vinegar on a dry, sunny day. It's great in the morning, you spray it, and it will literally incinerate the weeds. We use that on our driveways and paths. You can also use salt sprinkled over direct onto the weed as well. We do hope you've enjoyed today's video on how to deal with garden weeds. We've looked at issues of what is a weed, why we weed, if at all, why should we weed, and then how. So we've had manual, mechanical, and obviously chemical control. Now, I'm just sitting in amongst some wildflowers right now. This is about 50% wildflowers. I haven't put these here, neither is Chloe. This has all been by nature and it is full of wildlife. If there's one thing we would like you to take away from today's video is the question to ask yourself, why should I weed? Always ask yourself that before you do any weeding, is why am I doing this? So, for any more information, on what we're up to and any gardening advice please visit www.twogreenshoots.com and also follow us on instagram obviously youtube and facebook and we look forward to seeing you next time